Okay, this lecture is going to review reading and assessing scholarly journal articles. I strongly encourage you to focus on this lecture as we are going to be um, spending some time um, or what I'm spending time on in this lecture is going to be for your um, two assignments. So the summary and assessment of your article, of the article that I provided to you, and your annotated bibliography. So please um, allow yourself time to kind of process this material. There are some readings for this week um, that go along with this. So scholarly journal articles, this is kind of just a review from the library, but they report original kind of primary research. They use the language within our discipline. The authors are often researchers or scholars in the field, and um, they're often published kind of by universities or scholarly presses that way. There's minimum graphics. I mean, this is not kind of Newsweek, Time Magazine people. Um, so um, that's what it looks like. Um, Peer-reviewed, or I, I kind of use peer-reviewed and scholarly almost interchangeably. I know they are different. But an article reviewed by three or more experts in the field who have anonymously determined that this research contributes to the field of knowledge and that the methodology was kind of sound in the field and scientific. Um, determining scholarly, a couple of things you can do. If you have the hard copy, which none of us really do anymore because we all do it electronically, right? Um, then you can look at that and it would say in kind of the front cover. You can just Google it. Google the, um, the journal article um, or the journal publisher and it'll say on their website. Um, the other thing is Ulrich's International Periodicals and that's actually obtained through the library website. Okay. I really want to spend some time kind of on this slide in particular. So there's several components of a research journal article or a journal, scholarly journal article. And you're probably familiar with this. And as you are looking at more and more articles, I want you to pay attention. There's always kind of a title. There's always an abstract. There's some sort of introduction. A review of the literature is what we often call it in kind of the beginning. Oftentimes they talk about the purpose of the study in there. Then they go on to talk about the methodology, what was done, how the data was collected, the sample size, instruments used. And then, of course, the findings and the results, a lot of statistical stuff going on there. And then the discussion, which is the interpretation of the findings. And perhaps implications or kind of ideas for future research. And then usually should be an extensive reference page. So as you're pulling journal articles, this is kind of the format that you should be seeing. Now, as I'm addressing that here, I want to spend a little bit more time kind of talking about this. As you are reading journal articles, um, oftentimes I have students say to me, well, how can I assess these articles? You know, this is written by, you know, someone who has their PhD and is an expert in the field. How am I supposed to assess this? <coughs> Great question. Well, anyone who's kind of gathering data and planning to use it should be assessing what they're reading. So you are kind of an assessor of the information that you're obtaining. Not everything that you say is going, is that, that they say is going to make sense to you. Um, so you need to kind of think about that. You also may have experience kind of in the field. This researcher may have kind of published the material, but you might have experience kind of in that area of practice and would think, you know, this might be something that you could do kind of in a research setting, but it's not practical to kind of real world experience, real world um, application. So think about that um, kind of in general. You know, you do have this expertise, and as long as you kind of follow these guidelines, you can assess this article. So let's start at the beginning. First thing you want to do is read the title. Does it make sense? Is it clear? Is the title as you read the article connected to the article, or does it not at all connect? Same thing with the, um, with the abstract. Is the abstract kind of connected to um, the article. As you read the entire article, if you go back and read the abstract, does it kind of make sense? Is it clear and concise? And most importantly, is it accurate? Um, the next part is kind of the introduction. Usually there's kind of jumps right into the article. And usually when you're reading, there'll be a whole bunch of references. We call this a review of the literature. There'll be a whole bunch of references to previous literature. So why do they do this, right? Why do they include all this old stuff in there? Well, they're setting the stage, okay? They're providing us with information. So all of these articles were written, I'll just say teen pregnancy, right? There's maybe a lot of data out there about teen pregnancy. And maybe all the studies are looking at um, girls in um, kind of urban communities. And so, um, and all of the studies are in schools that are diverse, but primarily African-American and white. 
um, Caucasian. So they're kind of putting up all this evidence of that, right? They're talking about the rationale for the study and the purpose of the study, why, and kind of all this evidence of what was published already. And then what they're saying is, is there's all this literature about teenage pregnancy in kind of these um, city areas, but they're, what they're setting the stage for is, but there isn't on, say, a specific population or a, a rural community. Um, perhaps there's all this data on teenage pregnancy, but not on, um, you know, a Hispanic or a Mexican teenage girls. So here we did this study, rationale would be the rationale for the study. We are going to do this study um, in Texas where we're kind of a border state and we have a lot of teenage girls coming in from Mexico. Now they're going to be dealing with additional stuff, not only being a teenager and being a teenage girl, but also there might be different things than say the girls in New York City. Maybe they're dealing with acculturation and kind of issues of adjusting to kind of U.S. culture. Maybe they're translators for their parents. And so what does that role kind of play in? So there's all these other kind of things. So I'm kind of setting the stages. There's all this evidence and research out there on teen pregnancy with this specific population, but not the population that I'm studying. And that goes to the purpose of the study. So why am I doing this study? Why is this important to read? And that should be really clear and really good. You should get a, you know, you can assess that review of the literature and say, okay, I get all the evidence out there. And, and these authors have a really good idea that this is why they are choosing to study this, this group or this population or the reason they did this article. I mean, the thing is, is you should be thinking as a reader, why am I wasting my time reading this article? If every single article is about teenage pregnancy in cities, you know, why should I read your article, so to speak? And if they did a good job in their introduction and purpose, that's what you should be kind of assessing really well. If they did a really good job, you'd feel confident that this was going to be kind of an article off to a good start. So spending time reviewing the literature that way, do the authors kind of present kind of the pro and con of the literature? Do they back up their study? Do they give you really clear reasons or a rationale for the study? Do they indicate the purpose of the study, why they're doing it. Do they include some sort of hypothesis? Um, they should, so assess that for us. That's part of this assignment, assess that. The methodology, so what is that? Basically, the methodology is I should be able to replicate the study by reading the methodology. So I'm gonna know that they went into schools, they found teenage girls who um, were pregnant um, or just had children, perhaps, I don't know, whatever the study, designation is, and they um, collected X amount of data on them, and what they did is they actually included them in, a, say, a six-week group they met once a week to talk about parenting skills and to talk about, you know, kind of how to balance things, to talk about budget, to talk about future plans, maybe to talk about their education, whatever kind of the curriculum was. This is what we did with these girls, and then we did kind of collected data in the beginning of the study and perhaps the end of the study. I'm just kind of making this up as I go, but you know, so you want to look at that in your article. What did they do? Is it clear on what they did? If you were going to go redo this study that you're reading about, would it would you be able to? Do you have enough information from the method? So, thinking about that, thinking about how they collected the data, does it make sense on how they did it? Um Anything that may have impacted kind of the collection of the data. Maybe when they were doing all of this collection, a tornado hit Texas at that time. And so that might have impacted their data that they were collecting kind of in their group work with these girls. Um, what kind of instruments or scales or tools were used to collect data? Are these surveys? Are they questionnaires? Are they urine samples? I mean, if you were doing something in addictions or drug use, you know, you might have kind of blood samples or urine samples or whatever. You know, what surveys or tools were used? And if those tools or surveys are, um, are, have support in them, were they proven to measure what they were supposed to? Um, CESD is an example of that, kind of a survey that measure, is supposed to measure depression um, is actually been validated survey that it does actually measure depression. So what instruments were used and, and were some of those validated or did the authors just kind of make them up? Okay, if they did, but good to know. Um, and then the findings and the results. This is where a lot of, again, the statistics are gonna fall in. You might not feel as confident in that, um, kind of not having been perhaps in a research class yet, but look at kind of the results. What are they kind of coming up with? 
The discussion is where they're going to interpret the results. They're going to tell you what they found. Do, are they reporting significance, finding significant findings? Um, do you think that it makes sense that they found what they were supposed to? Did they find what they were supposed to? Maybe they thought that this, you know, um, school curriculum for these teenage pregnant girls was going to help them, you know, be better parents or do better in school or stay in school or bring up their GPAs. Did it? Did, it, did they find what they were kind of expecting that way? What are some of the limitations to the study? There's always limitations. The authors always note at least two or three of them. What were those? And do, do they discuss those? And do you kind of agree with them? And then certainly thinking, usually there's some sort of um, implications or kind of where we're going future-wise. What research needs to happen? Do they discuss that? And what does that look like? And then certainly look at the reference page. What's kind of talked about there? What's addressed there? Um, spend some time looking at those references. So I guess I'm kind of giving you all this information. It was a lot. I hope you took some notes because I want you to then go to your article. You can even take a break right now. Go to your article and start pulling apart these different things. I asked a couple questions on each one of these things about the title and the abstract. Take one or two of those questions and try to answer it as you're working to assess this article. It's going to be so much easier if you have some sort of question that you're asking yourself and then working to answer as you go through. So again, for the summary and assessment of an article and for the annotated bibliography, what you're doing is summarizing the article in your own words, tell me what they did, and then you're assessing it. And the assessment is the most important part. That's really where you're illustrating your critical thinking skills. It's the part that most students kind of struggle with them the most. So I'm kind of proposing these questions to you. So go ask yourself these questions as you're reading the article and kind of work through the answers and write that up. All right. So what I just talked about, you, you're going to see several different kind of research um research out there, kind of different scales or different research types in your articles. This kind of qualitative where they talk about kind of a small sample size. They went out to a school and they interviewed 10 kids about um, gun violence. Okay, so really small sample. Maybe there's really no measures, but it's just kind of these two hour interviews with 10 students. Kind of low in terms of generalizability. I can't really apply this to Connecticut or, or Colorado or any other state, maybe because I did this in Maryland, but really small sample size that way, not a lot of generalizability. Next study is more quantitative. I went and did a survey or I went and did a measured something with some sort of scale in, you know, all the Montgomery County and Howard County and Baltimore um, County and city schools in Maryland. And I collected, you know, 2,000, you know, um, data or scales or measures. So I'm going to have a much higher diversity pool. Um, I'm going to have probably a diverse group of students with I kind of hit all those different counties in Maryland. And I'm going to have a higher generalizability. I'm going to be able to almost apply the, what my findings were to other kind of schools um, that way. Combination might be a little bit of both. Maybe I took 2,000 students and kind of did a quick survey with them. And I also pulled 50 of those and did an actual full one-on-one -on -one interview with them and collected an hour's worth of data for each one of them. So kind of a mix of both. You can kind of see pros and cons of both of what it's going to give you. So thinking about that, these are the three kind of articles that you want for this assignment. A lot of students are kind of get the, I'm going to talk about the next type in a minute, will get the other articles. It's a lot harder, I think, when you're learning this skill of assessment to assess an article that is more theoretical. So please try to find articles that have data, that have a research study that was actually conducted by those researchers. All right. The other times types of studies are a couple things. One is there's this kind of measurement creation. What I was just talking about earlier was there are scales that are developed to measure depression. So you could come to me as a social worker and I could do kind of an interview with you about an hour plus and I could find you kind of clinic where you were on the clinical depression scale, right? On the depression scale. I could do that with you. Um, now that's kind of a lot of time if you're running a survey or running a study for to pay me to interview a thousand client, a thousand participants, um, you know, that's a lot. So instead, 
um, what we've done is we've kind of created a scale, like 20 questions, that if you kind of check those off, you're going to be, I'm going to know kind of where you are on the depression scale. Very depressed, not so much depressed, not at all depressed. And the way we measured that was for this kind of scale development. So basically, they did that. They gave everybody this kind of 20-question survey, and they had them meet with um, somebody to assess depression, and they were able to kind of validate um, this scale or measure. So it's a really good research article, but not something that I really want you to do in this ass these assignments. Um, the meta-analysis is going to review a whole bunch of research done on a topic. Um, I worked f um, right out of college do doing some research assistant stuff. And I did work with this woman who was really cool. She basically took, oh my God, I had to do all this data collection from her. But we used to collect all these articles on like, pick a cancer. It was like lung cancer. So I'd find, you know, 10,000 articles on lung cancer. We'd narrow them down as to how many were connected in some way. Maybe they all got the same drug. Maybe they all received the same treatment. Maybe, you know, they all had the same type of lung cancer, whatever it was. And she we combined the articles that were kind of most connected um, into um, to make a, a larger pool. You know, each article maybe only had 500 participants, but if you pulled them all together, you know, if you pulled five of them together because they had loosely the same criteria, then I had you know, I don't even know what that is because I'm such a mathematician, but you had, you know, 2,500 participants instead of 500. Um, I hope that's right on the math. So anyway, again, there's a lot of statistical analysis. There's some hypotheses, but there's not research done by the researchers, actual like a research study. They're just pulling other research in. Um, conceptual or theoretical, so coming up with an idea, a framework for understanding something um, and thinking about that theory and what that kind of looks like. Um, maybe looking at why domestic violence occurs through the theory of gender inequality, like something of, like that. Again, more kind of talking about it. There's a lot of information, but you're not going to actually see a study um, done. Literature review is basically similar to a meta-analysis, meta but just kind of review of all the articles that are written about lung cancer. Um, doesn't really collect actual data, but just kind of summarizes what's out there. Um, and then certainly critiques. Um, authors kind of present their view on a certain issue or a policy or a law or program or a method, um, but it's really kind of up to the author about what they're going to do. Okay, so again, these are the, the different article, the different types of research that are out there. I think it's really important for you to know that. But again, for this assignment and perhaps some of your other assignments, you really want more qualitative and quantitative research. And that's something when you're talking to your professors in terms of assignments, you might want to clarify kind of what they're looking for. Um, this is actually from Perugaman and Hewitt, which is in your readings, is to really um, help you read an article. So kind of how are you reading an article? Um, so when you read the article, maybe first kind of skimming the whole thing, looking at the structure, seeing that it has a methods and an um, intro and a reference page and all that. Um, and then going through and looking at kind of the major points and the main points, kind of how well addressed everything is. Um, and then the active process is, again, taking those questions that I asked you a few slides ago and really trying to answer them as you're reading the article. Like read the article and then try to go back and answer some of those questions. The key point in all this is allow yourself time to process this, to consider it, to think about it, to digest it, um, to question it, to review it. So you read the article tonight and you just kind of sit with it. You know, two days from now, you pick up the article and you ask yourself the questions about it. When you guys are writing a research paper, I can't stress this enough, when you're writing a research paper like an annotated bib or anything else where you're integrating research, you can't just pick up, find the article that night and write the paper. Um, you got to allow yourself time to process this. So finding the article two weeks out, reading it, thinking about it, jotting down some notes, digesting it, going back, looking at the assignment, figuring out how it's all connected. Allow yourself time to process. I can't stress that enough. Um, kind of questions to ask yourself before, during, and after, after, kind of who the articles are, the journal, their credibility. Do you understand the article and the terminology? What's kind of asked of you? Um, do you understand the main points? And if you don't, kind of talking to someone about that. You know, hey, I just want to spend some time kind of talking about this article. Um, this is what I kind of found, even just a peer. 
kind of after you read the article again this goes back to kind of what we talked about in slide five these are more general questions and students will say to me well how do I know if the methodology is good well true because maybe you haven't done enough studies yet or read enough studies to know so that's why what I talked about in the previous study is more kind of assessing what was done in the methodology that you know did they use what tools did they use what measures did they use how did they collect the data you can kind of assess that if you get more specific with it so these are more general questions about it um, and certainly taking notes and Hugh, um, Pergamon and Hewitt talk a lot about that kind of you should have highlights and notes and little gibbers and your own kind of translated stuff on the on the sidelines of all of your stuff so that you kind of know um, when you look back on it what's going on um, this take notes thing I think I have a little sample in um, Blackboard but I'll make sure I put that up there um, it's just pulled from Pergamon and Hewitt though so again, you have your annotated bibliography and your um, uh, summary and assessment of an article that I provided with you. I, I can't stress enough, I want you to summarize for me the article. Summarize what was done in the study. And what's interesting is I find the students that do well on this assignment, I'm able to read their summary and know what was done in the article without even reading the article. So if I can read your summary and I know what happened, then I know you got kind of what happened in the article. So summarize the article. What um, what did they do? What were, what were they looking to do? What was the purpose? What was the methodology? That's kind of what I want you to tell me. What happened? And what were maybe some of their findings? Then the biggest part is the assessment piece. And again, I can't stress how much I kind of weigh this um, is the assessment part. So go back, listen to this lecture again, pay attention to the first few slides where I, I think it was slide number five, um, where I talk about kind of that assessment piece. Really dig deep and assess that. The best way that you can understand is if you can describe what you read and assess it. You guys have been doing book reports since like um, second grade. So I know you know how to summarize stuff, but the assessment piece is the next level of kind of your academic career that way and I want to see you start working on that here because you're going to need to use it in all your other classes whether in social work or other disciplines. Thank you so much and have a good day.